Well, hello there, friends, enemies, and the indifferent. I know it's been a while, but this video did take a long time to make. By popular demand, I'm finally doing the Austrian beer review video. And um, please be lenient with me, I'm, I'm not really a good reviewer. Uh, most of the time I don't really know what to say about it. Also, I'm taking this opportunity to use this video kind of sort of like a 500 subscriber special. Thank you so much to everyone who stuck with me and who's still watching, especially considering that my videos are kind of bland and boring and I upload like two or three of them every year, tops. And especially considering what kind of fancy schmancy and elaborate videos there are on YouTube nowadays. So, but yeah, I didn't even expect to have a hundred subscribers, let alone 500 by now. So, um, thank you. That's all I can say, really. And my modus operandi, so to speak, hasn't changed at all. I'm still not making money out of this. I'm just doing it kind of like in my spare time, just for shits and giggles. Oh yeah, excuse my language every now and then. I don't censor myself. I don't dance around the YouTube algorithm. So if there's any political incorrectness or, or harsh words or stuff you're not supposed to say anymore, please forgive me. And if you don't, well then don't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> in any case, this video will be quite long and keep in mind that still being that long, um, there are a lot more Austrian beers around. I just reviewed those that, that at least I have known for many years now. And also I just reviewed the most popular ones all over Austria, I guess. Of course, living in the capital city of Vienna, I don't know all about the, the micro brew scene in kind of like Western Austria, if you get my drift. So, of course, there are lots of micro breweries, craft beers, you name it. And on top of that, we don't just drink Austrian beers. For example, myself, I'm pretty fond of, of beers from the Czech Republic and I think I'm not, I'm definitely not the only Austrian who thinks like that. Also, there are a lot of excellent beers from all over Europe and the world actually. We like to drink here, I like to drink here. So yeah, this is just a drop in the ocean, this video, kind of. Maybe, just maybe, if you like it, I might make another one with all the other beers I personally like, regardless of where they come from, where they originate. Mm -hmm. So okay, this introduction is already getting too long. Mm. And yeah, I'm enjoying a glass of wine while doing a beer review video. Odd. Oh, the alcoholism! So finally, let me say, please forgive any continuity errors. As I said, this video took a long time to make because I'm not getting any younger and I can't chug him down like 20 years ago, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I've already done two videos about Austrian snacks many, many years ago. I will see to it that they are linked down below in the description of this video. The first entry is produced in the private brewery Egger in Lower Austria and it's called Pittinger. It's actually some sort of uh, wheat beer. Usually the Germans have their wheat beers. I don't know too many Austrian wheat beers. The southern Germans that is, Bavarians. It's at 5.3% alcohol. Yeah, I know I'm like supposed to drink it from a, from a, from a tall slim glass, but unfortunately I don't have any wheat beer glasses. Because I don't really drink wheat beer that much. I'm actually, I'm not that much into it. Hmm. Let's get it over with. Well, it's actually not that bad. Usually, wheat beers kind of taste like bananas to me. That's kind of... I mean, it sounds obvious, but it, it has kind of a wheaty, uh, bright uh, taste to it. For lack of uh, better expressions. Usually this is enjoyed during the summertime, um, when the weather is hot outside. And you can put a slice of orange, uh, orange. And you can put a slice of lemon in it. Not, not bad actually. I think. Ah, damn. Hm. Yes, actually not that bad. But I've got my wheat beer fix for a year now, so... <laughs> 
let's head on to the next one. This one is called Hubertus and it's a Merzenbier. Nice golden color. Well, actually, I managed to pour it without any foam whatsoever. It looks kind of like a like a large urine sample. <clears throat> yeah, that's appetizing. Well, anywho, it clocks in at about 5.1% alcohol and it's got a bit of a strange taste to it, to be honest. I don't have this brand too often. I mean, it's not really bad, but it has some sort of some sort of almost bubble gummy aftertaste. <laughs> Holy crap. <clears throat> Maybe I'm getting too drunk, I don't know. Bubble gum beer. Nice. Maybe it's just me, I, don't, I really don't know. The next beer is produced by the United Corinthian Breweries and is of course from Corinthia. Oh yes. Villacher. Another Merzen beer. So this one is also not very common to get, at least in Vienna. So I'm kind of excited to try it. And not my first time, I think, but it's been a long time since I've had this. Mm. Clocks in at 5% alcohol. And I'd say it's a really good beer. Nice balance. Not too bitter, not too sweet. Nice balance between maltiness and hoppiness. Overall, very balanced out beer. I would say this is kind of a typical Austrian style beer. Mm. <coughs> Trummerpils. So that means that's a pills. So basically meaning it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more bitter than your usual beer. A little bit pale in color. Looks like piss wasser. Anyway, it's about 4.9% alcohol, and there you go, down the hatch. First impression... Um, first impression, it's not quite as bitter as a usual pill. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. After the... yeah, it is, it is. It's bitter. Alright, it's a pills. But it tastes like... A bit strange, kind of watered down. It, it tastes like watered down beer and it's bitter. Oh, and did I mention it's bitter? I think it's time for some snacks. How about a pizza roll, which is um, basically a, a smooshed white bread roll topped with some tomato paste and cheese and peppers and salami or ham really nice so what's really popular as a snack here is just a big slab of dark bread maybe put some thin layer of cream cheese on it and then layer it with um, anything you desire like uh, bacon salami peppers onions sweet corn and a thick layer of cheese of course you name it and maybe put even maybe even put a fried egg on top, like sunny side up, you know. And yeah, of course, broil this motherfucker. <clears throat> Excuse my language. Yeah, this video is uncensored. It's not monetized, so it's okay. I I, I guess I can swear all I want. <laughs> yeah, gratinate that bread. But since I didn't have all the ingredients at home to make it myself, I um I ordered it from some local place, and they delivered. Oh yeah. Did they deliver? So let's take a look. And then since it's from a from a from a restaurant, as you can see compared to my hand, it's a really big slice of dark bread, you know. <laughs> so this one, I guess, is the tuna fish and olives and onions and cheese one. And there we got kind of like bacon or smoked ham and uh, sweet peppers. And this one with with all those colorful peppers, I think that's the the, the really spicy one with uh, salami and and hot peppers. Oh my God! Look how big it is. Also, they they come with like two dipping sauces, each one kind of like a cocktail or Thousand Islands 
So I know it's not the same. Maybe, maybe it's a cocktail sauce and this may be some sort of sour cream or garlic dip. And one mixed salad per bread is like uh, yeah, tomato and sauerkraut, cucumbers and potato salad. Yeah. So holy crap, I'm so excited to try those right now. Mm. That's the olive and tuna fish. Mm. Mm. Really nice. This is um, the one with smoked ham and bacon and sweet corn and sweet peppers. Ooh. Mm. Everything under the nice cheese blanket. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh yeah. And this one's supposedly really spicy with hot peppers and salami. Let's take a look. Or a bite, rather. Ooh. Huh. Mm hmm. Wow, they sure didn't lie. <clears throat> it's pretty hot. <clears throat> I mean, it's not super hot if you. If you're accustomed to hot food, it's like jalapeno level hot. It's not like habanero level hot. It's it's, it's okay, but still got a nice kick. Mmm, I love salami and hot peppers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even use the dipping sauces yet. Awesome. So if you've got a sweet tooth, the Austrian Krapfen is the right snack for you. It's basically an Austrian style donut. And it's not exactly a donut. Um, an American acquaintance of mine once told me, oh, I can't do Krapfen, man, they are dry, nasty things. Well, in the Krapfen's defense, if it's fresh, it's not really that dry. But I can see what he meant. It's like um, the dough of a Krapfen is more coarse, yet at the same time more fluffy. It's not quite as sweet as an American-style donut. So, yeah. So in all honesty, I have to admit, I take Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme and it over Krapfen any time of the day. So what you're supposed to do is you need to find the filling hole and uh, I think that's right it. Can you see it? Yeah. Right there. And bite right into it. Didn't bite deep enough, but apparently there's a, a filling. Mm. Oh yes, and traditionally that's an apricot jelly filling, but nowadays they're available with a chocolate filling, vanilla custard, raspberry, strawberry, yeah, whatever, whatever kind of filling, yeah. And you can see the dough is not quite as, as dense and, and fine as a donut dough, so yeah, that's what I meant. Mm. Mm. Pretty good though. The next one is from the microbrewery Bewog of Bad Radgersburg in Styria. Now you might notice that Bad Radgersburg is very, very close to the border between Austria and Slovenia. Supposedly the story behind this is the guy who owns the place is actually Slovenian and he wanted to open a microbrewery, but the government in his own country made it very difficult for him to do so. So after a while he simply said, yeah, fuck this shit, if you guys are gonna make it difficult for me, I'm moving my business over the border. And so he opened his brew house in Austria, because our government supposedly put less bureaucratic hurdles in his way to open that kind of business. Next one is actually an Indian pale ale, and as you can probably see by the can, it's um, kind of a craft beer here. You have to know that up until relatively recently, um, those uh, very hoppy kind of uh, beers like pale ales or Indian pale ales um, or even the, the very s kind of strong uh, double or imperial IPAs were not widely popular or even known at all in Austria. And even nowadays they are kind of like considered something special here, you know, and, and you can only get them on tap in like the, the first district of Vienna where all the fancy schmancy gastropubs and, and bars and restaurants are located. But they are slowly gaining more popularity. They taste obviously very different than your usual Austrian beers, which are a little bit more malty, like the beers of the English-speaking world. And yeah, of course, to, to you guys from, from America or, or Australia or whatever, uh, Indian pale ales, IPAs, uh, pale ales are not really that unusual for you. 
personally, I like it every now and then. I, I can't, maybe I, I can't drink it every day, but I like the really hoppy, extremely hoppy flavor of a, of a good IPA, and I prefer strong IPAs that have like, like 8 or 9% alcohol. So anyway, of course, with the gaining popularity of this kind of beer in Austria, all of the, the big breweries are trying to make their own pale ale or IPAs, and I have to say, most of them are not really that good compared to the real ones that you can get in the English-speaking world. To me, they are not nearly hoppy enough, and, and maybe that's deliberate, kind of like to, to slowly ease the, the Austrian palate into this kind of flavor. But yeah, it's not really for me. I, I want all or nothing, you know. And I have to say, this one is actually pretty good, even though it's an Austrian IPA. So let's give it a try. It's not really that strong, but it's a, a little bit stronger than your usual Austrian beer. It has, uh, I think, uh, yeah, 6.5% alcohol. Or maybe I should have said it contains 6.5% alcohol. My Austrian English is sometimes... Yeah. Ooh. yeah, I mean sometimes the Austrian comes through when I try to speak English. Mm. Kind of like slightly cloudy, nice color, and yeah, extremely... Mm. Very, very hoppy, like an IPA should be. Kaiser Doppelmalz, the Emperor's Double Malt. Oh yes, nice and dark. This is what we in Austria like to call a dark beer. And it's uh, it's very different from the dark beers of the English-speaking world, like Great Britain, the US, Australia, you get the drift. Remember Lord of the Rings, when Gimli the Dwarf said something about malt beer? I imagine this is what dwarf and beer would taste like. It's very sweet. Oh, I didn't try it yet. <laughs> so I think you could imagine this is what dwarf and beer would actually taste like. It's not so much on the savory side or the umami side like uh, the the English the, the beers of the English speaking world. Mm. It's really malty, very sweet. Almost no hops tasting at all. Wieselburger Gold. Nice golden beer. Very popular here indeed. 5% alcohol. Mm. Actually kind of my Austrian favorite these days when it comes to run-of-the-mill everyday beers. Very balanced. Not too sweet, not too bitter, not too strong, not too light. Hmm, Wieselburg. Nice place. They have some sort of huge uh, bovine insemination place. I was gonna say clinic, but I don't know if you can say clinic when it's uh, about animals. <laughs> Please help me out in the comments, all you native English speakers there. Anyway, they have some very rewarding, financially rewarding of course, uh, part-time jobs for students there in the bovine insemination business. I remember I was tasked with milking the bull, so to speak. They have this nice rack built up that looks like the behind of a, of a female cow somehow, and below that is you, the, the guy who's supposed to milk the bull, you know? You got like your, your heavy rubber apron, like elbow high glo rubber gloves and like welder's goggles and stuff like that for safety and protection, and a, a huge kind of like plastic see-through bottle with a nice cushioned entrance and you're, you're like a football player you're like on your knee and holding the bottle and are below the rack and when the bull comes and mounts the rack and and his member is like Ooh, like a snake uh, going your your direction your channel direction don't panic that's the worst thing you can do you're supposed to kind of like uh, gently but but very firmly guided into the direction of the bottle and then instantly he shoots his um, stuff and it's, it's it's kind of a gross feeling when the bottle gets warmer and warmer and it's kind of a huge load if you get my drift so um, why not to panic well uh, if you do panic 
uh, and, and you don't quite catch the, the Bulls member uh, in the right time and manner. It's like he needs to touch you only your shoulder or the side of your head or something like like two times and he showers you with his love, with his bovine love, so to speak. Yeah, yeah like you said, kind of a really interesting job there. Hmm. So this is actually a Wieselburger yet again, but what we like to call a black beer. With a very traditional cap. Dude. Dude! 4.8% alcohol, nice and dark, like the double malted beer. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm not surprised I've had this before, actually. I really like it. This is, um, this one actually comes closer to what the British or the American people might um, associate with dark beer. To us, it's black beer. It's really kind of like savory, worthy, a bit tart. Basically, it is like, um, like almost like Guinness, like like carbonated cold black coffee, which isn't a bad thing for many people. Uh, at least to me, it's not. Hmm. I like it. I kind of like it. Yeah. But once again, for us Austrians, there's a huge difference between the typical Austrian dark beer and what we call black beer and um, what's dark beer in the English-speaking world, so yeah. I don't know if anybody learned something. Anyway. <coughs> hmm? Awesome. Awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait, is this is this thing still on? Uh, Wieselburger again. <laughs> I keep I keep stumbling over this brand, but it's it's a really good beer, I think. This time, the kind of beer I'm presenting is a Zwickel. It's also very popular here in Austria. It's like some sort of non-filtered or not as heavily filtered beer that's kind of naturally cloudy. Maybe you can see the cloudiness compared to usual blonde beers. So as you can see, it's not as clear as a usual beer. Hmm. And I like it quite a bit because it's not as bitter as a normal beer. It's got like a, a sweet touch to it, but not too sweet. Kind of comparable, maybe, to the honey lager beer I was introduced to in Canada. But... Uh, yeah, maybe not as kind of light and sweet as the honey lager. Did I mention it, it's, it clocks in at about 5% alcohol? It's still got a little bit of tartness to it, but also the sweetness. Mm. I think it's time for some more snacks. Oh yeah, I'm quite sure that Tardotron remembers this one quite fondly. Leberkäse literally translates as liver cheese, even though it doesn't contain liver, nor does it necessarily contain cheese. I guess it's like the term head cheese for terrines or meat jelly products in English. Anyway, it's some form of meat pate, usually made out of pork. The traditional version is actually made out of horse meat. Yes, horse. <laughs> and us Austrians go nuts over it. It's served as a snack in a Kaiser roll, plain like that, or with onions, dill pickles, mustard, ketchup, mayonnaise, even tomatoes or leafy greens. Or as a complete meal, pan-fried with a sunny-side-up egg and mashed potatoes, or even breaded and deep-fried along with some sides. It comes in a lot of different styles, but the most common ones are plain, filled with cheese or hot peppers, or cheese and hot peppers. If it's filled with cheese, it's called Käse Leber Käse, which would literally translate as cheese liver cheese, which sounds kind of funny to me, actually. An American friend of mine once compared it to a, quote, Christmas ham. After tasting the cheesy one, Todatron himself said it's like an awesome ham and cheese. Of course, I chose the cheesy one. Oh yeah, look at that. And of course, the classic way is to eat it in a freshly baked Kaiser roll. Yeah, nice thick slice in there. 
Some people even like to add to the calories uh, by adding ketchup or I have a coworker who drowns this as rich as it is with the cheese and everything he drowns this in mayonnaise believe it or not but it's yeah to each their own I prefer it just plain like that just the the, the case liver case inside the Kaiser roll the cheese liver cheese this is so ridiculous mmm <laughs> so super soft it's it's a really really soft cheesy if you if you get the version with cheese obviously it's a really really fatty very soft meat pate kind of thing of course it's not healthy at all it's soul comfort food it's uh very high in fat and calories needless to say i love it those little friends are called gabelbissen or literally translated as fork bites which basically means like a small snack in essence they're just some mayonnaise in a cup with uh, bits and pieces of vegetables maybe carrots and peas and they come with slightly different toppings there's always kind of a sliced dill pickle and some carrot but for example underneath the carrot there's a, a slice of boiled egg this one there's a slice of, of ham pickled fish sour fish yeah and all of those are covered with a more or less thick layer of aspic to keep it fresh, I suppose. But I really, I really don't like the the texture and mouth feel, so to speak, of aspic. So I'm gonna remove that. And looking considerably less pretty already. There you go. I'm sure most people can't even stomach kind of like a a, a cup of mayonnaise. <laughs> must be strange to non-europeans yeah but we sure do like our mayonnaise mm. oh yeah nice and of course very very rich and when it comes to snacking what could be more austrian or german for that matter than sausages in whatever way shape kind of form along with some bread i don't have unfortunately i don't have a slice of bread i just have this rye bread roll but it'll do with some sweet mustard and some spicy mustard and don't you ever dare eat them with ketchup I'm just kidding you can eat them however you like so in this case that's what I had in the fridge I had some boer sausages boers in like uh, white people in South Africa sausage cheers mm. awesome dudes time for some cold cuts I know this small plate is kind of like pathetic, but it's all I had <laughs> in my apartment at this time. So what do we have here? I got some smoked beef, uh, some smoked cheese, yeah I like the smoky stuff. And this is made out of sheep's milk and some blue cheese. Really creamy but really matured and salty and really intense. So not really the kind of blue cheese that my American friends would be used to, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. I'm sure Tatatron could tell you about his experiences with that. <laughs> but in any case, good stuff, in my humble opinion. This one has also been around forever. I remember my late grandma making this for me when I was a child, so... Just butter some bread with butter. Yeah, that sounds intelligent. And put on a layer of anchovy paste. So. No, I, I kind of uh, can understand that people who don't like anchovies in the first place would like this because it's really salty and stuff. Also that's the reason I wouldn't recommend using salted butter because the anchovy paste is already quite salty. It's basically just anchovies and olive oil. It may be an acquired taste but I'm used to it since childhood so I find it to be quite yummy. I can imagine this must be the same like with, with British people and their Marmite or Australians and their Vegemite. I like both of those, by the way. But I'm guessing not too many people outside of those cultural circles do. So let's see. Mmm. Yeah, takes me back. Stiegelbier from Salzburg. This one's actually pretty popular throughout Austria, so even in Vienna I can get this without any problems and it's a 
Very common here. It's got 5% alcohol. Oh, I can't talk anymore. I'm getting a little lightheaded. Nice color once again. Nice foam head. Not too much. Not too... What's the opposite of much? Little? Less? Oh boy. So... Cheers! It's not bad. Not bad at all. <clears throat> But it's not quite as balanced as some other beers, that's why I don't drink it too much, too often. The only quarrel I have with this is it's like, at least to me it seems that way, it's like heavily carbonated, it's too much carbonation and uh, it lacks in the depthness of flavor. It's not, it's not perfectly balanced. I mean there are beers who, who have like, uh, who? <laughs> I mean there are beers that have like almost no carbonation which tastes like stale from the beginning even if they're fresh from the can or the bottle or the keg or whatever but this is like way too much for me too much carbonation and 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 i think the carbonation overpowers all of the flavor it doesn't have really that much flavor but maybe that's just me because it's a really popular beer here in Austria and I mean all over Austria. Yeah, I know even though Austria is a really small country, it's like, um, yeah, this, this beer is still from a different federal state than here in Vienna, right? Salzburg, Vienna, pretty far apart for Austrian standards. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ottergringer Helles, a cold blonde, their usual run-of-the-mill beer, 5.2% alcohol, widely known and relatively popular here in Vienna, I guess. Yeah, what can I say, it's been a while since I've drank this one, because to be honest, this one, Ottergringer beer, is a, a tad too sweet for me. But it's not a bad beer per se. It's drinkable. Enough said. Another Ottergringer beer. This time at 5.3% alcohol. And it says this is a Viennese original. So it's not their usual run of the mill Ottergringer beer, but a Viennese original. Yeah, I, I, I never had that before, I think. At least I, I can't remember. Let's see how it goes. Doesn't look too different from your usual run-of-the-mill beer. Maybe a tint darker than a usual blonde, but not much. So let's see how a Viennese original tastes like. Slightly bitter, but not too bitter, kind of like a mix between some sort of lager and the pills. Difficult to describe, but not unpleasant actually. A little bit bitter though. <clears throat> so this next one, Ottergringer again, at 5% alcohol. But this time it's not your usual beer, blonde beer or something. This is what we call uh, a Misch beer. Basically like a black and tan in the English speaking world. Only with Austrian beers obviously. So this is like half and half usual blonde beer and the other half the, the malty sweet Austrian dark beer. Which makes for Kind of the best of both worlds, supposedly, but it's still a little bit sweet on the sweet side, yeah. So as you can see, not quite as dark as the actual dark beer. Also not quite as bright as the usual blonde beer. 50-50 mix, oh yeah. Smells rather pleasant. There goes nothing. Yep, <clears throat> not as bitter as a usual beer. Not quite as sweet as the dark multi, super multi beer. Still a little bit too sweet for me personally, to be honest, but to each their own, right? Can of Zipfer. I actually like this pretty much. It's a little bit on the stronger side for usual Austrian beers. It's It's got 5.4% uh, alcohol. And I remember drinking this a lot as a student and like many years ago. It's really balanced and it's a typical run-of-the-mill Austrian beer. Nothing too fancy, nothing overly special, just some nice stuff. Oh yeah, cold blonde. Yep, this is the stuff. Pretty nice. Oh boy, I could really eat something right now. 
An ideal item for snacking would be Liebtauer. And you can get it in either mild or hot and spicy. In essence it's a spiced cream cheese. Um, it's made with uh, cream cheese, obviously, a little bit of butter, paprika, salt, pepper, sometimes small minced dill pickles and onions, even capers or mustard. And I'm guessing there are as many recipes if you want to make it yourself as families in Austria and Hungary and all the neighboring countries for that matter. Hmm, maybe I will do a video on my mom's Liptauer recipe someday. And well, usually Liptauer is handled like a spread. You smear it on some piece of bread or a bread roll. But for snacking, we like to take Soletti. Some thin, crispy pretzel sticks with salt, in essence. They look like this. Nothing special, for sure. But it's one of those foods that once you, you start, you, it's, it's very hard to stop. Mm. Anyway, now this is where the Liptauer comes into play. We just take this and get a load on the Soletti. Yeah. Mm. Really pile it in. Now the triple Soletti attack for the spicy one. Yeah, always happens. Yeah. Right. Oh. Do you like mulled wine or wintry punch? Then you'll love the Austrian style grog donut or cupcake. Um, this is actually rather small. Usually they are almost the size of a Rubik's cube. I don't know what happened to this one. <laughs> so and if you think Krapfen are too dry, you definitely won't have this problem with this one. It's very dense and very moist. Mm. It's basically a dark layer of really dense and moist um, mass sandwiched between two sponge cakes and uh, the dark mass is orange peel, lemon zest, cloves, cinnamon and of course rum. It tastes very very boozy and wintry and nice. So if you make it yourself it's definitely not for children but I think those industrial made ones they, I, I don't even know if they contain real alcohol. It sure tastes like it, but you know, through the miracle of chemistry, you can do so much nowadays. Mm. And once again, something sweet. How about Linzer Torte? I need to make a bacon camouflage video about this one. It's actually, I think, the oldest cake uh, in, in Europe or something. The oldest cake recipe from within Europe. It's a dough of uh, mainly nuts and cloves and cinnamon and orange and lemon zest, kind of like those wintry, like, almost like a pumpkin pie spice mix, but not quite. Topped with red currant jelly and baked. And you don't have to buy a whole big round Linzer cake. They also sell them in those kind of like snack sized little pieces in, in, in various variations. For example, this one. Relatively thin. Mm. Nutty and cinnamony. Mm. Dense and moist. Perfect. Or this one. It's a little higher. And yep, basically they're all the same. Just variations. Mm. This snack is kind of low budget, but I fondly remember it from my childhood days. And essentially all you need is some couple slices of not so fresh anymore bread. And I'm not talking rock hard or something like that, but you know, kind of stale. Still soft to the touch a little bit, but not, not this freshly baked taste that everybody enjoys. Yeah, I said that very strangely. And why am I getting so close to the camera? Hmm, I wonder. And all you have to do is heat up some oil or butter. I personally prefer butter because it tastes better. And fry it up on both sides nice and crispy. And generously season both sides with some herb salt and garlic powder. Oh, and I'm throwing in some onion powder as well, just for shits and giggles. <laughs>
And of course you could pimp it with some fresh herbs or actual garlic instead of the powder. But the idea here is that it's made of the very most primitive things you have in every common household, I guess. Yeah, eat it while it's fresh and hot. Dig in. Nice and crispy. Obviously garlicky and savory. Mm. Nice primitive low budget snacking. And what can I say? Bread and beer. I've known a guy who has lived on nothing else for weeks. Also quite popular here is anything with bacon and egg, like this spread. So yeah, just slather it on there quite thickly. So yeah, just slather it on there and enjoy. Make it count. Mmm, smoky, salty, eggy. Perfect. And I'm asking you, what could be more Austrian or Southern German, Bavarian for that matter, than a freshly baked pretzel bun? Yeah, no, unfortunately I don't have any pretzels. So a pretzel bun will have to do. Mm. Ah. But anyway, it's the same kind of uh, bread roll. The secret is before baking, it's dipped into a bath of caustic soda, sodium hydroxide. Mm. Which makes it super soft and kind of um, a little bit salty. But what am I, who am I talking to? You all know what pretzels taste like, right? No matter where you're from. Okay, for this one, <laughs> I forgot to push the, the record button on my camera, so uh, I already poured it and I'm just gonna have to show you the empty can. Schwächerte Bier, 5% alcohol. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is another one. I can't say too much about it. I mean, I don't know what to say. It tastes like beer. It's, it's not... It's also kind of like nicely balanced and not too bitter, not too sweet. Uh, I could drink this all night long though, so if, if that says anything about it, and I mean it in the best possible way of course. Let's head on. Another Schwächerte brand beer, but this time the beer type is Viennese Lager. At 5.5% alcohol, nice and uh, honey colored, uh, quite a little bit darker than your usual beer, but Kind of like the Ottergringer Viennese original. Well, probably it's kind of the same type. I didn't know about that, to be honest. <laughs> but I like this one actually quite a bit more. It's not as bitter. Kind of nice balance between sweetness and bitterness. I know it, it sounds like I'm really hard to please. One beer is too sweet for me, the other beer is too bitter for me. But when push comes to shove, I'm, I'm not that picky when it comes to beer. You can feed me anything, you know. If, if it's beer, if it gets me drunk, I will like it. <laughs> come to think of it, the only beer I think I really cannot stomach is kind of a, a sour beer. Like, uh, what was that brewery called? I think it's called Mont Blanc or something like that. They have like different kinds of beers for the beer tender. I tried one and it was really sour and I thought, oh, maybe the cake was spoiled somehow and uh, I, I threw it away because I, I honestly couldn't drink it. I, I thought it was beer gone bad, beer gone sour. But then I, I ordered another type of the same brand and it was equally disgusting to my palate. So I can drink, you know, Bitter beer, sweet beer, strong beer, dark beer, whatever, you know, but, but the, the, those kind of sour beers are not really my thing. I know it might be kind of redundant and very long, this video, I mean, I'm not really a good reviewer. <laughs> I hope um, whoever asked me to do beer reviews gets a kick out of it, because uh, apparently that's, that's as good as it gets with me. Um, I, I do apologize if it's not good enough, though. At least I'm having my fun. <laughs> this is a Gösser, even a Merzen. Clocks in at 5.2% alcohol. I remember this beer kind of fondly, because I've been drinking this beer since I was a teenager. And yes, the legal age of drinking wine and beer in Austria is 16. Only more harder stuff like like whiskey and vodka and, and, and shit like that is like age 18, legal age. It's really nothing that special. It's your mediocre run-of-the-mill Austrian beer. I still like the taste very much. 
And I drank this like a lot, like I said, as a teenager, as a student. Because 20, 30 years ago, when there was no internet widely available and not 24-7, 365 days a year, uh, online orderable delivery of booze and, and all sorts of food from traditional to ethnic, there were just a few pizza places that you could call uh, that deliver you some, some food. And most of those places, even back then, they delivered alcohol, but mostly really overpriced, not too good quality wine and other stuff, like beer by the bottle. And there was one pizza place that started delivering beer, like this kind of beer, the Gösse beer, in like six packs of cans. And it's still overpriced though, but... Uh, not not terribly overpriced, but still, you know, even though it was overpriced, it, it was delivered at, right at your door, ice cold, in a six pack. So you could order like two, three, four, five, six packs, and you were all set. <laughs> even if you had a party of like a, a couple of people. So naturally, my younger self gravitated towards this kind of service, and what can I say? It stuck. Okay, this one is Puntigama beer. It's from the same Austrian federal state that my father originates from. It's got about 5.1% alcohol. Well, not about, pretty much exactly 5.1. Anywho, I... A nice Styrian beer. And actually, I'm drinking most of this video out of a Puntigama brand beer glass, so yeah. But I have to admit I haven't had Puntigamma in a long time. And I have to admit I really like this. Not only because my father is from Styria, but they have a slogan, an advertising slogan, that may, may sound kind of, of silly or lost in translation. It translates to, to Puntigamma, the beery beer. Um, actually, that sounds just as stupid in German as it sounds in, in English. But I kind of know what they mean by it. It's kind of like really beery. I mean, it's excellently balanced. It's slightly on the bitter side, but not too bitter. It's it's really, really nice to drink, really drinkable. It goes down like beer. Ah, Svetla Export Lager. 5% alcohol and once again, I don't really know if I've ever had this beer before in my entire life. I mean, I know I'm aware of the existence of that brand, but I think I actually never had it before. Hmm, private brewery Zwettel. I do have to admit I'm quite fond of any type of lager beer. Hmm. This one's actually pretty good. Hmm. It's got like a slight bitterness with caramelized undertones to it. Yeah, I sound like a like a hipster, <laughs> but but honestly, <clears throat> pretty pretty good. Oh yeah, hmm, be likey. Oh wait, that's a little too low. There you go. Hirte Privat Pils. A private pills. And here on the bottleneck it says Echtes Bier. Real beer. As opposed to fake beer, I guess. 5.2% alcohol. And you can even get this. It's not widely popular in Vienna, I'd say. But you can get this at some restaurants on tap. And what can I say? I'm no stranger to this one. Yeah, it's a small bottle. Of course you can get it in bigger bottles as well, but I have so many beers to review. So I think a, a small container once in a while doesn't hurt. Cheers! <coughs> Not bad. What can I say? It's a pills, it's bitter, it's okay. Nah, no, seriously, it's fine. Murauer <coughs> beer. At 5.2% alcohol, it's a Merzen again. Probably another decent beer I can't say too many things about because it's not that popular here in Vienna. Or so in different Austrian federal states. But obviously you can get it here too. Small bottle, yeah. 
you know the drill. Oh. Pretty decent beer, a little light in taste for my palate though, but uh, not bad, not bad. Mm. A little bit heavily carbonated and light for my taste. So this time another Egger beer and it's a Merzen again. At uh, around 5% alcohol. Oh yeah. Crystal clear, nice and blonde. <laughs> oh shit. Since I did, don't film those chronologically, <clears throat> I, I've tried the Egger Merzen before I tried the actual Egger. It's been a while since I've had Egger beer, so... I was going to say, ah, oh, compared to the usual Egger beer, this is like so-and-so, but yeah, since I am yet to try the Egger, <laughs> I can't really do that. <laughs> oh boy, this is just so ridiculous. <laughs> In any case, it's like, uh, how should I describe it? This kind of slightly metallic, not the best beer I've ever had, not the worst, like a little bit, hmm, I would say it's like a little bit subpar, mediocre at best, well, not at best, it's, it's pretty mediocre, it's, it's, it's okay basically, it's a very dry beer, but that slightly metallic metallic taste rubs me the wrong way a little bit, uh, I, I won't lie. Maybe it's because it's out of a can and not out of a bottle, I don't know if that's a, an urban myth or if there's actually some truth to it, because I know it, it even if it's from a from a metal can, the beer is not directly in, in contact with the metal, actually there's just some, some sort of coating inside the can, not many people know about this. <laughs> Whatever, it gets the job done. Because I'm an idiot, the other Eger beer, which I thought was the regular one, was also a Merzen. So I reviewed the very same beer twice and I didn't even notice it until I started editing this video. I love to save my dignity by saying, let's see how my subjective perception differs according to my mental and physical condition on different days. But it even seems like I did those two clips on the same day too. So yeah, let's watch me making a fool of myself. Eger beer at about 5% alcohol. And I'm afraid this is one of those beers I can't talk too much about because um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've had it before, but decades ago, I guess. It's not really, really in my inner radar when it comes to beers. Anyway, okay, to me, that's definitely... Hmm. It says it's very lightly hopped. And I'm guessing they're going light on the malts either, because um, to be honest, to me, this is the taste is uh, a bit too thin, while the carbonation is, is too high for me. I don't like excessively sparkling drinks. A little carbonation is fine, but this is, I think, this is too much. And um, it tastes a little bit watered down. The beer taste is too, too thin for my taste, so for my palate. So, yeah. If I've got nothing else, it's not disgusting, but it's definitely not my first choice. Yeah, and that concludes my Austrian beer review and snack video. Naturally, I didn't cover everything. Uh, the only things that come to mind now would be like a smoked beer. I think the, the hops or the barley or something they used to make that particular kind of beer is smoked before processing it. And it, I really like this kind of beer because it tastes like, literally like liquid bacon. Like bacon out of a beer bottle. It's, it's amazing. If I, if I can get some, I will make another video maybe someday, if you like this one. Also, usually there's kind of like seasonally available beers here. For example, during the winter time, we like to drink uh, something that's called Bock beer. It's kind of like a, a, a little bit of stronger beer than usual. For for example, our usual Austrian beers have like f anywhere between four and a half to five and a half percent of alcohol content, and the the Bock beer is a slightly stronger version, with up to eight percent or even more alcohol. Eight percent, ten percent. It's not for everyone. It's really strong. Some taste better than others, obviously. But yeah, 
let's keep it like this for now. This video is already pretty long. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and see you guys anytime soon. Which might be in one month or in half a year, knowing me. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <clears throat> bye for now. Thank you.